All right, if we'll come to order. Again, if we will come to order, we'll reconvene, having established a quorum in the hall. If you'll indulge the chair, the chair believes we have at least six memorials that are critical for this body to act upon. They can be handled by the uh, general board. You have already given permission by our first memorial for them to care for unfinished business, but it is the opinion of the chair that uh, there are at least six of our remaining memorials that would be priorities for you. If you indulge the chair, I'll simply go through uh, my list. Uh, memorial uh, three, excuse me, we do have uh, an action to take in regard to the South Pacific Regional Conference, and uh, that will be by motion by Dr. Lyon in just a moment as the first item we take up. The chair also suggests that we probably would be the best body to deal with Memorial 347, 349, 364, 757, and 760. And if the chair hears no objection, we'll make those our priorities as we move forward. Chair hears no objection. All right, chair's going to recognize Dr. Uh, Lyon for a motion. This is a, this is a motion to affirm the recommendation of the general board to the, gen to the international conference for the advancement in status of the Wesleyan Methodist Church of Australia and New Zealand to form the South Pacific Established Regional Conference. All right, it's a motion. Is there support? support. The chair here's support. And uh, need the paper, thank you. This, uh, by way of explanation, because of the timing of the international conference, uh, the general board, uh, which is the highest governing body of the church in the interim of our uh, quadrennial general conferences, authorized the advancement in status of the uh, Australia and New Zealand mission fields from North American supervision to that of uh, participation in the South Pacific Established Regional Conference as the first such body in the history of the Wesleyan Church globally. And uh, uh, we bent the rules a little bit. Uh, by interpretation, we assumed you would have wanted the general board to take that action and uh, yet the rules uh, in their technicalities call for this body to be the one that approves advancement in status. You can slap our hands if you like. We already did it, it's accomplished. But we kind of thought the general conference would like to go on record as the body that uh, ratifies this historic movement uh, to uh, recognizing established regional conferences around the world and established national conferences. So we're asking you after the fact to uh, consider blessing what the General Board has already done and the International Conference has already approved in creating this first established regional conference uh, formed by two of our former North American mission fields. If uh, you are in favor of that, uh, you would vote yes in a moment to the motion. If you're opposed to that, you would vote no. Is there any discussion? All right, the chair is going to uh, invite you to uh, vote on this matter and uh, let's use our electronic devices. The motion is that we ratify, uh, affirm the recommendation of the General Board to the International Conference of the Wesleyan Church for the advancement and status of the Australian and New Zealand uh, mission units to form the South Pacific Established Regional Conference. If you're in favor, would you vote one for yes, two for no, as the timer starts?
it has passed. And we want to congratulate our mission unit representatives. Is uh, Reverend Rex Rigby, the uh, national superintendent of the Australian Wesleyan Methodist Church with us? If you are, Rex, could I ask you to stand and wave your hand over here to the side? And Richard Wad, gentlemen, the uh, national superintendent for the New Zealand uh, uh, Wesleyan Methodist Church, could we ask you two to come forward for a moment? We would like to recognize you as a conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the Reverend uh, Dr. Richard Waugh, National Superintendent for the Wesleyan Methodist Church of New Zealand, now half of the South Pacific Regional Conference of the Wesleyan Church. We've invited him to make a few remarks, and after that, I introduce to you the Reverend Rex Rigby, who is National Superintendent of the Australian Wesleyan Methodist Church. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, family of the Wesleyan Church in North America, thank you from our South Pacific uh, Conference for your affirmation and for your long-standing support of the mission of the Wesleyan Church in our region at the ends of the earth. We're so appreciative of outstanding missionary support, of financial assistance, of prayer, of many of you who have visited Australia and New Zealand, Australia established as a mission field in 1946, Solomon Islands and the Bougainville 1990s, New Zealand 2000. So we uh, form our conference with uh, more than 170 churches and uh, 4,000 members and continuing to grow, as you can see from the, uh, the well literature on your seats as well. So thank you for your support as we together love Christ and embrace our world. Thank you. I would like to agree with uh, Dr. Richard War in the statement from the ends of the earth but uh, New Zealand really is the very ends of the earth. <laughs> I want to say thank you as well on behalf of Australia for uh, your faithfulness and for the many missionaries that you sent to Australia, the many guest speakers that you sent over that um, had a great impact upon the work. And for me especially too, for men such as uh, Jimmy Johnson who came and spoke, for missionaries like Bill and Daphne uh, Foster, and for others that uh, impacted my life and gave me an example of what uh, holiness and what the spirit-filled life was about. And so I want to just say thank you, and it is great to be a part of this worldwide movement, the Wesleyan Church. God bless. Thank you, friends, and I have an invitation, a standing invitation, to go to uh, Australia and New Zealand, and uh, I hope the planes keep flying there. I intend to go visit my friends as often as I can. If you'll turn to Memorial 347, our reader is coming to assist us. Found on page 89. Yes, page Sorry. 89. Resolved that Discipline 1935, Sub 15, and Discipline 3091 both be amended by adding to each. If the General Superintendent is unable to be present to preside over a district service of ordination or commissioning of ministers, first to be considered to represent the General Superintendent will be a former General Superintendent in good standing. 
Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of Memorial 347. All right, 347 is before you, coming recommended. You ready to vote? Chair believes you are. If you are in favor of the adoption of 347, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. It's the opinion of the chair that you'd like to make this effective immediately. So moved. It is moved and seconded. It's before you. Any discussion? Again, this requires a two-thirds vote. If you're in favor of making it effective immediately, you'll say aye. aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is so ordered. The chair believing that was sufficient for two-thirds. Let's turn our attention now to Memorial 349. Resolve that Discipline 1990 be amended by striking the paragraph and replacing it with a new paragraph indicated by bold italics. The general officials shall be ex officio members of the executive cabinet with responsibility for internal cooperation. All members of the executive cabinet shall be available to attend the meetings of the general board except for executive sessions and shall be invited to speak to any issue. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 349. 349 comes recommended, so is before us. Any discussion? Hearing none, if you are in favor of memorial, the adoption of Memorial 349, you'll say aye. aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried, and again, it's the opinion of the chair. You may want to make this effective immediately. So moved. It's a motion with support. Any discussion? Hearing none, if you are in favor of making this effective immediately, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is so ordered. Having the necessary two-thirds. We turn our attention now to Memorial 364. Resolve that discipline 1920. This, excuse me, just a moment. What page in our uh, readers? Uh, in, 98. Page 98. Sorry. Right. Page 98. Yes. Resolve that Discipline 1920, sub 24 through 26 be amended by striking the subparagraphs in their entirety and that the following be adopted as new Discipline 2060 through 2068. All right. This is a rather lengthy section coming up next uh, for reading. Would you be pleased to have the chair give you a brief synopsis rather than hear the reading since this has been in your hands? Does the chair hear any objection? Hearing none, uh, paragraph 260 uh, specifies uh, where help can be found in, uh, from those who have need of informal opinions and inquiries about church law. Currently, the general superintendent, the, uh, in the previous structure, the three general superintendents received frequent calls from district superintendents or pastors, uh, persons uh, dealing with legal issues, other matters that required some kind of information or interpretation about the discipline uh, from all those uh, varieties of sources. Uh, it's simply impractical to expect that a single general would be able to respond effectively to such numerous calls for interpretations. And so uh, this places in the hands of the Executive Director of Communication and Administration Division responsibility for routine uh, or uh, responses to routine inquiries about the discipline, not asking for an official ruling, but just help in finding information from the discipline or understanding it better. There are times when official rulings are necessary. That's where someone has a lack of clarity uh, to a sufficient degree about a requirement in the discipline that uh, they need the general superintendent to uh, establish a formal ruling that becomes the new law of the church until such time as the general conference either ratifies that action at its next sitting or disapproves uh, the ruling of the general superintendent. And so this is to clarify the process by which the general superintendent would get at those official rulings. It uh, calls for the general superintendent to receive the request and calls for the general superintendent then to consult with the executive board of the general board 
uh, before giving final approval to and signing an official ruling or, uh, or interpretation. The superintendent can also utilize the good offices of the executive director uh, uh, or any other person, uh, legal counsel if necessary, to help establish a clear ruling that will be of help to the church. And then there's information here in this memorial about how those official rulings are to be reported and processed and uh, also information about the general superintendent ruling on the legality of official actions of a district conference or a district board or committee uh, by providing a mechanism for that. That happens infrequently, but if it happens, there is need for clear instruction in the discipline about how it's to be done. So that's the purpose of the memorial, to uh, assist us in those rare instances where we have such a serious matter that it requires an official ruling by the general superintendent who now must do this uh, single-handedly. So it is before you. Uh, did you move it? Uh, yes, sir. All I right. do uh, move the adoption of a Memorial 364. All right. It is before us coming recommended. Any discussion? All right, well, I'm impressed I did such a great job with that that you don't have any questions now. All right, if you're in favor of the adoption of Memorial 364, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed to its adoption, say no. It is carried. It is the opinion of the chair you want this to be effective immediately. There is motion with support to make it effective immediately. Any discussion? Chair hears none. If you are in favor of its immediate implementation, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is so ordered with the necessary two-thirds. We are now taking a look at Memorial 757. This memorial is located on page 110. 110. Resolved, paragraph 4270 be amended by inserting Roman numeral uh, one between the word amended and by in line two and adding the words or two by two thirds uh, affirmative vote of the general board when designated and authorized by the general conference. Then you have it listed as it would read. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of Memorial three, uh, excuse me, 757. All right, it is before us coming recommended. Uh, the bylaws of the church have been restated. This is necessary for bringing clarity into our discipline uh, regarding how that process is accomplished. Any questions? Chair hearing hears none. If you're in favor of the adoption of 757, will you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried and so ordered. And now we need to turn our attention to memorial number 760. Located on uh, page 111. Resolve the, that the discipline of the Wesleyan Church, paragraph 4320, sub 4, be stricken in its entirety and replaced with the following. All members of the board of directors and all principal officers of subsidiary corporations uh, in 4310, sub 1, shall be covenant members of the Wesleyan Church. Two-thirds of other subsidiary corporations shall be covenant members or ministers of the Wesleyan Church. The remaining one-third of the members of the Board of Directors may be non-Wesleyans. Before we move the adoption of this, the Chair would like to inform the body that uh, the General Board discovered uh, a grammatical uh, error in the wording of the second sentence and is proposing new language. It's already been recommended, so we will make it part of the memorial that we're going to consider. Uh, the second sentence should read, two-thirds, now insert these words, of the members of the boards of directors. Two-thirds of the members of the boards of directors of other subsidiary corporations shall be covenant members or ministers of the Wesleyan Church. All right, we apologize for the omission, but glad we caught it before you said that uh, only two-thirds of our subsidiary corporations had to have Wesleyans as their uh, governors, all right? 
All right. Now, would you like to move its adoption? S sir, uh, I do move the adoption of 760. All right. 760, as you have heard corrected, is before us. Any questions? This is saying that our subsidiary, except for our districts, which are subsidiary corporations, uh, except for district officials, our other subsidiary corporation boards may have uh, up to one-third of their members who are non-Wesleyan. So that's what you're being asked to approve. Any question or comment? All right. If you're in favor of the adoption of 760, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is adopted, and it is the opinion of the chair. You want this to be effective immediately. Does anybody agree? So moved and seconded. All right. The chair hears a motion with support to make this effective immediately. Any discussion? If you're in favor of its immediate implementation, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It carries with the necessary two-thirds. And we thank you for dealing with those priority items. We are now back to the consideration of Memorial 348. Okay. Memorial uh, 348 uh, is on page 90. Resolve that Discipline 1976 be amended by striking General Administrative Council and replacing it with Executive Cabinet and adding and serves as the Chief Financial Officer of the Wesleyan Church Corporation. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 348. Three forty-eight is now before us. Uh, simply clarifying the uh, identification of our chief financial officer and general treasurer. Any discussion? Hearing none. If you are in favor of the adoption of Memorial three forty-eight, would you say aye? aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is so ordered. All right, the chair has heard a motion with support for the immediate implementation of 348. Any discussion? If you're in favor of immediate implementation, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried by the necessary two thirds and made effective immediately. We are now at Memorial 387. Okay, uh, that's page 102, 387. Resolve that Discipline 2365 be amended by striking the current verbiage as indicated and by substituting the language shown in bold italics. Um, the, the general educational institutions of the Western Church and their various curricula offerings are determined by the general board. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 387. All right, the chair believes we, we have... Uh, an incorrect version, perhaps, in the hands of the delegates. Did the uh, memorial in your packet sound like the one that was read from the podium? All right. Uh, with the indulgence of the body, again, uh, an error was discovered in the memorial that was distributed to you earlier. Uh, the uh, general board has corrected that error with uh, this new memorial. Is this available in printed form? For the delegates? Well, they said that what was read, they, don't, they have the new one. Oh, you have the new one. Yes, I believe they do. Let me read you what the new one is, and you tell me if it's the one you've got. All right? Uh, the the uh, corrected uh, memorial, the resolve says that Discipline 2365 be amended by striking the current verbiage 
as indicated and substituting the language shown in bold italics, number one is Kingswood University. Is that the version you have? How many of you have that version? How many of you have a different version? All right, then you need to hear the correct version. The resolution is, the memorial is that discipline 2365 be amended by striking the current verbiage as indicated. Er, well, you don't have it. We're simply trying to give you a list of the five educational institutions and remove the list of degrees that are offered by each one. We simply need a list in the discipline of the actual educational institutions. So the new memorial would say the general educational institutions of the Wesleyan Church are Kingswood University, Sussex, New Brunswick, Canada, Houghton College, Houghton, New York, Indiana Wesleyan, Marion, Indiana, uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Southern Wesleyan, Central South Carolina, period. All right. It's, uh, are you, would you like to move it for adoption? Uh, yes, sir. I do move its adoption. All right. And it comes recommended by the Committee on Memorials. It's open for discussion. We apologize. You do not have the actual copy in your hands. But Joey Jennings, Western New York. Our copy is very similar, except that the alf they're alphabetized differently. I believe that's the only difference in what we have and what you've read. All right. And these do move Kingswood into alphabetical order. Yeah. All right. Then the chair doesn't have the correct version either. So. We're simply trying to have a list in our discipline in the appropriate place of our educational institutions, leaving out the specific curricula offerings of those institutions because that is governed by the uh, general board policy for higher education and uh, the, uh, the governing bodies of these educational institutions. So uh, it's not necessary for us to have all this verbiage in the discipline about these. Is it clear to everyone what we're voting on? Yes, in the back, and uh, please go to microphone seven. Christy Lipscomb, West Michigan District. I understand that Wesley Seminary at Indiana Wesleyan is part of Indiana Wesleyan University and are governed by the same governing board. So it seems to me it would not make sense to list Wesley Seminary as a separate institution. However, I just wondered if we would want to consider uh, on the list Indiana Wesleyan University and Wesley Seminary at Indiana Wesleyan University. I, I present this more as a question than, than as an actual amendment and would, would uh, defer to the, the chair's wisdom and how to handle that. Thanks. It would be the opinion of the chair that we're simply listing the names of the actual corporate body that would govern all the programs and uh, 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 structures within that corporation. So I would advise against that. However, I would defer to the president of Indiana Wesleyan University to comment on it. Yes, Dr. Smith. That's a very nice uh, gesture. It highlights the, uh, the seminary. On the other hand, it is true what you said that is clearly under our governance. That was important for us for many, many uh, reasons. Uh, both accreditation and otherwise. And so unless you just wanted to highlight it, uh, there would be no reason to do it from your standpoint. But thank you. Thank you. All right, the proposed memorial calls for simply listing the names of the educational institutions and their uh, primary geographical location and omitting all of the curricular uh, language specifying the degrees they offer, leaving that in the hands of their governing bodies. You ready to vote? If you're in favor of Memorial 387, as we've attempted to correctly state it, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. And where are we now? We're at 395. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, in the back, microphone seven. Blessed is the opinion of the chair that there are items that are necessary for this body to carry. I would move the suspension of the rules and move to 1120 for discussion. All right. It, it, uh, do you mind just making it a motion that we proceed immediately to 1120? I would do that. Thank you. That. A little simpler. Uh, is there a support? 
There is a motion with support that we proceed immediately to 1120 as our next item of discussion. Any, uh, if you're in favor of that, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. We will move now to Memorial 1120. And we'll call upon the reader to read the entire memorial. Whereas is also. Okay. Read the whole thing. Uh, and this is located, I believe, on page 118. Is that correct? Okay. Um, memorial 1120. Whereas the 2004 General Conference passed unanimously by ballot vote a memorial whose resolution in part stated the following. Resolve that every member of the Wesleyan Church in each unit, local congregation, district, and institution of the Wesleyan Church seek ways to cooperate with local, county, state, and national entities in their attempts to maintain the sanctity of marriage according to biblical principles, whereas the Bible begins in Genesis with a marriage of a male and a female, whereas the Bible ends in Revelation with a wedding of a bride and a groom, Whereas Jesus spoke definitely of marriage in Matthew 19 as consisting of a male and female, whereas the Bible consistently portrays God's pattern for marriage as being one man and one woman, and whereas God created male and female with the capacity for physical, spiritual, and psychological oneness, Resolved that the Wesleyan Church exercise any and all reasonable options for exerting influence to defend the traditional, natural, and biblical definition of marriage in any country where it has standing and influence. Mr. Chair, I move its uh, adoption. All right, comes to us recommended and is before you now, microphone seven. Mr. Chair, I move to amend the resolution to include the words after marriage as the God-ordained union of one man and one woman, and I will speak to it after the second. All right, the amendment, is there support? All right, there's a motion to amend by inserting the words after the word biblical definition of marriage, so after marriage, insert as the God-ordained union of one man and one woman. You now have the amendment before you and uh, microphone seven. Whereas the whereases disappear once we make a resolution, the whereas is very clearly specified that our purpose is one man and one woman However, the resolution uses words like traditional, natural, and biblical. And in the last 10 years, I have seen these words being redefined and shaped. I believe the resolution needs to put the anchor point that what we believe is traditional and natural and biblical is one man and one woman. Thank you. Thank you. Demonstrations in order. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right, if you're in favor of the amendment to insert the words after marriage, marriage as the God-ordained union of one man and one woman, will you say aye? Aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried unanimously as an amendment to this. The now uh, amended memorial is before us. What is your pleasure? Microphone 10. Jim Garlow, Pacific Southwest District, coming for two reasons. One, because of the placement of the cameras, uh, my 91-year-old mother has been watching every bit of the live streaming from San Diego, and when I missed a session, she texted me and wondered why I was absent, so I had to get on the camera to prove her I was here, <laughs> present in the event. On a more serious note, I want to... I wish we could just call attention for a moment and contextualize this, is, this goes way beyond the definition of marriage and why this is crisically important to us right now. While we were sitting and debating and discussing yesterday, two more court rulings came down that have enormous implication on all of us. One of them, five years in the courts, involved a Wesleyan. 
a graduate of Indiana Wesleyan University, Elaine Hugelin, who in April of 2008 was taken to court by the New Mexico Civil Rights Commission simply because she is a 25-year-old who had founded her own photography studio and refused to film or tape a, uh, a lesbian service in a state that doesn't even have uh, domestic partnerships or same-sex marriage, so-called. But nonetheless, the Civil Rights Commission took her on on this, gave her a hefty fine of an excess of $6,000, and she's been represented by Jordan Lawrence of Washington, D.C. since April of 2008. She lost the case as of yesterday. It means that no person has any religious rights or religious conviction privileges to stand on this issue. It's a massive loss every time we have same-sex so-called marriage in the Europe or in the six states in the District of Columbia. There are three casualties immediately we've got to understand. And it's religious liberties, parental rights, and personal freedoms are lost immediately. And the declaration of this is coming from sources we would not expect. We've seen our administration and Kathleen Sebelius take on the most powerful religious figure in the U.S., uh, Cardinal Dolan recently, and, Arch and Cardinal uh, Burke and Archbishop Charlie Sheppey, they're warning us of the rapidly eroding religious liberties. Uh, Chuck Colson's final comments on March the 30th, the day he had his seizure and died a few days later, was on this very issue. I would direct pastors, if I can, at the risk of sounding like a commercial, to go to pulpitfreedom.org, pulpitfreedom.org. If we do not defend our liberties, it's evaporating at a pace far in excess of what any of us anticipated. And I would just like to make the plea, we started this conference on Saturday with a brilliant declaration about the dogwood tree, about Adam Crooks, about the gavel. And here we are at the very end. We've covered some very important things that have to be covered. I understand that. But we are on a train track with a locomotive coming at us in our culture right now. And we have to close now. We all have to pack up. We all have to go home. And we've not had the opportunity to wrestle with a host of social issues that were at the founding of our organization, for which we're all very, very proud. This is only one of them. But we need to find some context, some venue, in which we can, we can do more than make declarations on pieces of paper that most people don't ever even see. Well, how we can take steps to defend the religious liberty that we value a great deal. Or, uh, on a more somber note, that we decide and figure out how, if, the, if we actually lose those religious liberties, how we function in an effective way as an underground church like the rest of the world is having to do right now. And my appeal would be we find ways in contexts like this where we can have these extremely important and needed discussions somehow when we have so many of us together. Obviously, every one of us are going to be here for marriage. I just wanted to put the context of how extremely serious this issue is, the implications that goes way beyond the definition of marriage, as important as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Others who wish to speak to the memorial? Memorial 1120 is before you. Are you ready to vote? If you are in favor of Memorial 1120, we're going to ask you to vote electronically. If you're in favor of Memorial 1120, vote one for yes, two for no. As soon as the counter comes up, you may vote. passes unanimously. Friends, we've expressed ourselves 
in a vote on an issue of enormous consequence in our culture to us as people who want to spread hope and holiness, let's express ourselves in prayer. Let's take a moment at this general conference to intercede on behalf of not only the United States of America or Canada, where this issue has been put in the center of public debate. We're not the only two countries of the world affected by this. Let's intercede for a world that needs the hope and holiness that we believe is offered to us through the merits of the atonement of Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, the fullness of his spirit, the great love of the Father. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. And after that moment of silent prayer, I'm going to ask Dr. Jim Garlow if he'll return to that microphone and pray for us, pray for our world, which is being impacted by culture shifts of a magnitude few of us understand. Let's intercede this morning. Let's plead with the Father for salvation for the nations. Dr. Gardo, please lead us when you feel we have had sufficient time for a, a quiet moment of intercession. Our God and our Father, we come to you with a sense of the failing of words in this moment for what all we are facing. We are fully confident in you, in your grace, your mercy, in your capacity to hold us in the midst of anything we may face in the future. But we would ask for an outbreak of spiritual renewal at the core of our nation, in the heart of individuals, of understanding the sacredness, the sanctity of the institution you first established on this planet. We pray for the young Elaine Huglin and the jolting news yesterday and the fines she now faces, perhaps ongoing appeals and the toll it's taking on her and her husband. I pray for Dave and Tanya Parker, who lost all their parental rights to explain biblical sexuality to their children, and parents like them all over America who are seeing the erosion of the capacity to teach godliness to the children. Pray for men like Aki Green, who encourage him and others like him sentenced to a month in prison for preaching from Romans chapter 1. This is a, a world we cannot quite grasp this moment. It goes beyond the dimensions of, of that which we're accustomed to, and we're beginning to experience what the rest of the world has known all along. And yes, we understand your church will flourish, but Father, we do cherish the privileges, and the liberties, and the rights, and the freedoms we have enjoyed in this nation. We pray for the counselors in, in my state who... We're on the verge of losing the capacity to actually give biblical counseling to any person struggling in this arena. We pray for those who struggle with same-sex attractions. We feel great passion, compassion, concern, deep love for those who even, even those who might be most hostile to us and our grasp of biblical truth. We pray, we pray that even your word in an outbreak of spiritual renewal break out in the epicenter of what would be called the homosexual community. Father, may they see the depth of our love, your love for those who struggle in these arenas. Give us wisdom of what to say, how to say it. Give us the wisdom of when to be silent and say nothing. May our actions be, demonstrate the true love of Christ. Father, we pray protection over the church. We pray protection 
over this nation and our neighboring nation in the north and around the globe for those who are struggling with the onslaught that's coming at us in these moments. Father, I thank you for founding fathers who had a, a dream of, of religious liberty beyond what any of us could have possibly written or crafted. And we cherish and value it this day and ask for supernatural intervention in our nation today. We repent of all of our failures and our sins and our shortcoming. Yes, for the high divorce rate in our churches and among us. We, we, we have plenty of things in our own lives to repent of, Father. And we acknowledge that. But somehow in the midst of our own brokenness and our struggles to be demonstrations of holiness, even in this arena of life, Father, we seek your protection upon us and ask the blessing of God to fall upon the nations of the earth in a very specific way as it relates to the sacredness of the institution of marriage of one man and one woman in this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's kids said, Amen. Thank you, brother. We return now to our business with Memorial... 395. Is that correct? Three ninety five. Three ninety five is located on page uh, one oh three. Resolve that paragraph twenty four oh three sub two of the discipline be changed by adding the words Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia. Yukon Territory, Northwest Territories, and none of it. Um, Mr. Chair, I recommend uh, Memorial 395. All right. Uh, Memorial 395 is uh, moved, moved for adoption, coming recommended by the Committee on Memorials. It is before you. Your pleasure. Microphone two. Mr. Chair, with respect to this memorial, I felt there should be a word of explanation. And although the whereases aren't included as part of the resolution, uh, I would like to turn your attention to the second whereas. In Central Canada's enthusiasm to win the loss for Christ and to plant Wesleyan churches across Canada in those areas where we do not have churches or districts, uh, we, we uh, wrote this memorial, which reads from sea to sea to sea, without respecting or thinking about or even conferring with our brothers in the Atlantic District. <laughs> now, since then, and by the way, we weren't thinking of a corporate takeover, uh, but, but since then, I have had opportunity to speak with uh, Reverend Leroy, the district superintendent, and uh, he certainly is in favor of uh, in full support of and assured me that the Atlantic District would be in full support of this resolution to not only uh, uh, have Central Canada be involved in these areas, but to cooperate together as two districts for the purpose of bringing Canada to Christ. And so for posterity, or in, in case anyone should read one of these whereases in the future, I would suggest changing the second whereas to the goal of the Wesleyan Church in Canada is to establish a Wesleyan presence from sea to sea to sea. Thank you. Can that be offered as a friendly amendment since we're only perfecting the preamble? All right, is there any objection to simply editing that? Chair hears none, so if you will change the second whereas to say the goal of the Wesleyan Church in Canada, strike central and strike district, is to establish a Wesleyan presence from sea to sea to sea. We have it covered. All right. This is before you. You are redefining the boundaries of the Central Canada District. You're giving them most of the territory from uh, Atlantic to the, well, from the edge of the Atlantic District on its western side, all the way uh, to the Pacific Ocean, right? And you're going to help us plant churches all through there. God bless you. All right, if you're in favor of changing these district boundaries, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. 
It is carried. Memorial 396. 396. Resolve that the listing of district boundaries in Discipline 2403, sub 17, be amended by adding Tennessee to the district name and adding the state of Tennessee and the churches in Lafayette and Rossville, Georgia, to the end of the sentence. Mr. Chair, I move uh, the adoption of Memorial 396. All right, it is before us, coming recommended by the Committee on Memorials. You'll see that we're also striking the former reference to the Tennessee District alone in this section. This is in recognition of the newly merged Kentucky-Tennessee District. Are you ready to vote? You're in favor of Memorial 396. Would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no, and it is carried. Would you like to make it effective immediately? There's a motion with support to make it effective immediately. Any discussion? If you're in favor, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is made effective immediately. We are at Memorial 398. We already passed it. 398. Resolve that the Kentucky Tennessee District be assigned to the Southern Educational Area by deleting and the Kentucky District from the Southern Representative Area from paragraphs 2455 and with the exception of the Kentucky District in paragraph 2465, 2455 be amended by adding and the Indiana South District, paragraph 2465 be amended by adding except for the Indiana South District which shall remain in the North Central area and replacing Bethany Bible College with Kingswood University in paragraphs 2455, 2460, 2465, and 2470. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 398. All right, it is before us coming recommended from the Committee on Memorials, any discussion? All right, if you're in favor of the adoption of Memorial 398, assigning the Kentucky Tennessee District to an educational area, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. Would you like to make that effective immediately? It is moved and seconded to make it effective immediately. Any discussion? If you're in favor of making it effective immediately, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. We are at Memorial 560. Yes, Five. excuse me just a moment. Chair, microphone three. Chairman Randy Swink from yes. Western PA. I would like to move that Memorial 1120 on the marriage be effective immediately. All right. Uh, it, it's the opinion of the chair that since it does not change the discipline, it has that effect already. Thank you, that sir. It already is effective. All right. It's a statement of this general conference uh, that can be published in news release uh, after this conference. By the way, uh, a news the formal news release about the business of this conference will be available. If I can find my announcement online uh, by general conference news releases will be available for download at wesleyan.org after June 11. So the official releases after June 11. All right, thank you. We're at 560. 560 is located on page 107. Resolve that the new discipline 3261 be adopted to add the role of interim pastors to the list within the pastor's category of service. Uh, right. Resolve that discipline 1090, 1180, uh, sub 26B, uh, 1233, sub 38, 1240, and other affected references be edited to reflect these changes. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 560. 560 comes to us recommended by the Committee on Memorials, so is before you for your consideration. All right, if you are ready to adopt Memorial 560, 
If you're ready to vote, uh, on Memorial 560, if you are in favor, please say aye. aye. If you're opposed to its adoption, say no. It is carried. All right, we are at Memorial 751. 51. Oh, excuse me, 741. 741. Uh, located uh, on page 108, yes. Resolved that the second sentence of Discipline 4210 be amended by removing the words and bylaws after articles of incorporation and inserting after the words as from time to time amended the following parenthetical statement which shall serve as the bylaws of the corporation. Resolved that the title of this subsection of the chapter be changed from B, Board of Directors to Board of Directors and Bylaws. Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of 741. All right, 741 comes recommended, so is before you. This is uh, to bring our discipline into conformity with the newly restated Articles of Incorporation for the denomination. Any questions? Hearing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of 741, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, before we move to, I believe, 749, I would like to speak for just a moment uh, regarding uh, the, uh, if I could have the privilege to speak for just a moment regarding our action on uh, traditional biblical marriage. As we say in the South, I'm going to bust if I don't get to say this. Um, <laughs> done a lot of reading this week, um, but I would just like to, to speak from my heart for a moment. Uh, I grew up in another mainline denomination, and uh, after my undergraduate work, I felt called to ministry as a senior in high school. After my undergraduate work, I uh, determined that I just could not remain there uh, because of some of the, the liberalism that I saw ensuing, and um, therefore I was miraculously led to this family that we call the Wesleyan Church. And uh, all of my ministry the past uh, 32 years has been in the Wesleyan Church, and I've always been thankful for and proud of our Wesleyan Church, but I don't believe I've ever been more proud than um, our unanimous adoption of Memorial 1120. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. It almost sounds mean to say let's go on, but let's go on. 749 is before us. Located on page 109, resolve that we strike discipline 4235 and substitute the following. Shall I read, sir? If you can read Latin. Uh, the chair believes this has been in your hands sufficient time. Uh, it is a legal matter. We have uh, consulted legal counsel on the wording of uh, this memorial which relates to the indemnification of our church officers. Uh, do you desire to have it read? Does anyone desire to have it read? All right, the chair hears no call for the reading. It, if uh, you'll place it uh, before us as a motion. Uh, yes, uh, I move its adoption, Memorial 749. Memorial 79, coming recommended by the Special Committee on Memorials is before us. What is your pleasure? All right, hearing no discussion, if you are in favor of the adoption of Memorial 749, will you say aye? If you're opposed, say no, and it is carried. Seven. We are at, uh, we have that. We are at Memorial number 900. Okay. located on page 112, 
Resolved that the general board appoint a task force of two or more persons to thoroughly review and revise the judiciary and uh, uh, ministerial restoration policy with the objective of simplifying procedures for conflict resolution and church trials and to report its recommendations to the general board for recommendation to the 2016 general conference. Mr. Chair, I move its adoption. There, the memorial uh, comes recommended, so it is before us, and it is calling for the appointment of a task force that uh, would bring recommendations to the general board to help it bring recommendations to our next general conference. Any discussion? Chair sees no one asking for the floor. If you are in favor of the adoption of Memorial 900, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. By the chair's reckoning, we are at Memorial 1010. 1010. Located on page 113. Resolved that discipline paragraph 5575 be stricken in its entirety and replaced with the following. Shall I read, sir? The chair doesn't believe it's necessary. Again, since it's been in your hands, this is simply, uh, re as you see in the whereases, uh, uh, changing the wording of the ritual for the public's reception of community members. Any questions? It is. Oops. Sir, I move its adoption. All right, it is before us, coming recommended. Any discussion? Yes, microphone three. Kathy Kelly, Western New York District. I had the distinct um, privilege of attending our May district pastors LDJ at the invitation of my DS, Pastor Joey Jennings, at which time we, um, he led the pastors through looking at many of the memorials that, were going to, that we were going to be considering at the general conference. And so I bring um, an amendment to this memorial on behalf of the pastors. Um, there was quite a bit of discussion and uh, it seemed that a majority of the pastors at that gathering were uncomfortable with um, the final questions, uh, specifically lines 27 to 32. So I would um, like to make a motion to amend to strike lines 27 to 32. Thank you. Uh, do you mean lines 28? through 32? Oh yes, I'm sorry, thank you. All yes. right. Third, uh, 28 to 32. All right, Is, you've heard the motion to amend. Is there support? Chair hears none. All right, the memorial in its entirety, original form is before us. Any discussion? Microphone 10. <clears throat> Dustin Farmer from the Pacific Southwest District. Uh, move to amend uh, in line 30, halfway in. Uh, in the previous motion to amend, I have no support for the first part of that, that motion to amend. It is the purpose to grow spiritually. I want them to have that purpose, but midway through line 30, and to prepare to receive the proper time in covenant membership so that we'll honor God and all you do seems to go against the whereases. So I move to strike from midline 30 uh, through line 31. All right, are you asking to place a period at the end of our church? Yes. Or, or excuse me, to place the question mark at the end of our church and uh, strike the remainder of the sins. Correct. All right, you've heard the offered amendment. Is there support? There is support for the amendment. It is before you now for discussion to strike the last clause, uh, uh, put the question mark after the discipline of our church, and strike the remainder of 
that clause. Yes, microphone eight. Gary Kind, uh, General Director of Education in the Ministry, for probably about five more minutes. Uh, I support the amendment because I think it brings into the ritual a, a de facto um, situation which was actually ratified four years ago in 2008. The covenant membership uh, category was introduced in 2000 as a discipleship category and the original intent was indeed that most if not all covenant members would eventually, I mean community members would eventually become covenant members. However, as the uh, working out of that has taken place in those churches which choose to have community members, which obviously is a minority of churches, it, it appears to be a category of membership which is really not moving forward to covenant membership. And so in 2008, as, as the chair will recall, we added the requirement that, covenant, that community members be baptized and that community members ag agree with the Articles of Faith, which had not been required earlier. That was a recognition that this is a, probably a permanent category of membership for many community members. They'd be baptized, agree with the Articles of Faith, and then further voting privileges were extended at that time. And so I think the church has already accepted that this is a permanent category of membership for many people, and I think it's fine for the ritual to acknowledge that. So I, I support this. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, microphone two. Hi, Terry Page, Western New York. I also support the amendment and the spirit of it, but I might just perhaps suggest a, a friendly amendment to the amendment that the uh, final clause so that you will honor God in all you do applies to all believers and community members and applies to the first part of the statement and so I suggest that we strike uh, the sentence following the words after church but that we include so that you will honor God in all that you do. All right please restate it one more time. Yes, that, that I move that, that what be stricken is the words from and through to membership. All right. Is there any objection on the part of the maker of the motion to amend, to leave those last words so that you will honor God in all that you do? No objection. All right. Being offered as a friendly amendment and accepted by the maker of the motion, uh, we will now keep the words so that you honor God in all you do and leave the question mark at the end of that, striking the words and to prepare to be received at the proper time in covenant membership. Any other discussion? Yes, microphone nine. A.J. Thomas, Atlantic District. Uh, does that not imply that in order to honor God, you must be familiar with the discipline? If it does, it's true. You know, it's, uh... Uh, given how many times even the fine folks on the table have had to refer back to the discipline, uh, I'm not sure that's a statement we want to put in place for anyone. Uh, I think it makes you a good Wesleyan, but I think you can honor God without being familiar with the discipline. I would speak against right. the amendment. All right. Forgive the chair for levity, but uh, it also seems that if you want to honor God as a co community member, you need to understand the discipline too. But uh, All right, friends, I'm going to remind you that we are in the waning moments of our conference, and we want to reserve our time for any uh, critical matters. There are some concluding matters we want. We've heard... Uh, uh, the, the motion to amend, are you ready to vote on that? All right, it's the motion to amend by striking the words and to prepare to be received at the proper time in covenant membership, leaving the remainder of it unchanged. If you're in favor of the amendment, would you say aye? aye. If you're opposed, say no. no. The amendment carries. The now the memorial as amended is before you. Are you ready to vote? 
All right, if you are ready to adopt Memorial 1010 as amended, you will say aye. If you're opposed, say no. It is carried. The next two memorials are Memorial 1100 and 1110, uh, neither of which is recommended, comes recommended. All right, the chair sees a request for, uh, okay, uh, microphone Chairman, 10. Mr. Chairman, I recognize in the lateness of the hour. Just a moment, no okay, microphone 10. Uh, Jim Garlow, Pacific right. Southwest. I recognize in the lateness of the hour, no one's gonna want this to be entirely red. It's too long for that. Is it possible to, since the delegates have had it for quite a few days, for them to read at least the resolved portion, call for reading of that, at least that portion, so this could be discussed at least briefly here today? You're moving for it to be read. Is that your motion? Yes, just the resolved all right. portion, if at all possible. All right, there's a motion to have the resolves read. Is there support? The chair hears support. We will hear the resolve read. Well, we will not uh, yet. Uh, you need to decide whether you want to hear this reading of only the resolves for Memorial 1100, correct? All right, if you would like to hear the reading of the resolves of 1100, would you say aye? If you are opposed to the reading of the resolves in 1100, say no. The chair believes the no's have it. All right. All right, and uh, Memorial 1110, again, was not recommended. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the chair believes that brings us to uh, the conclusion of scheduled business and memorials. Is anyone aware of a memorial we overlooked or that needed to be made effective immediately that we did not tend to that? All right, microphone seven. Mr. Chairman, it was my understanding that there might be a memorial coming in dealing with religious liberty. Was that able to be accomplished or not? Chair is going to turn to Dr. Lyon for information about this. Uh, actually, it's not a memorial as such, Wayne. Uh, this is a statement of affirmation. I want to read you the statement of affirmation and then uh, with your, uh, affirm your affirming that we put a task force together to write a position paper on this that uh, is distributed widely. I just want you to know also that the Wesleyan Church and the leadership of the Wesleyan Church has, has been very involved at many forefronts on, on the issue of same-sex marriage. Uh, we've signed many statements. In fact, just last week signed a statement regarding that went directly to the White House, also one that just went to Sebelia, uh, Secretary Sebelius. Also, we have regularly working with the International Freedom Alliance with people who are working constantly on Capitol Hill. So we are not being silent on this, and I want to affirm the folks in North Carolina who just uh, were able to uh, pass that, uh, defeat the amendment on same-sex marriage, and I saw a lot of the things that the North Carolina people were doing, and I'm greatly appreciative of that. But as Jim Garlow mentioned, religious freedom is really at the bottom of much of this. I've all, we've also been working with the Catholic bishops in this piece as well. But I have an affirmation. I'd like to go ahead and read that. And then for you to affirm, for us to go ahead to put a task force that writes a really, po really clear, concise position paper that we can distribute and also work with this. As Wesleyans, we affirm that the Christian faith, by its very definition, is a community which has faith-driven responsibilities to reach, to teach, and to care for the world. That if moral arguments and behavioral codes springing from faith are banned from public life, our society will, be have, will have become intolerant and undemocratic. That religious freedom is more than a private exercise, such as freedom to worship. That freedom of religion and free speech undergird rather than undermine diversity and pluralism. Therefore, we as Wesleyans join with like-minded groups to protect our religious freedom at all levels. If you would affirm this, uh, I would like for you to say aye. aye. And if you would also affirm that we 
go ahead and put together a task force to write a position paper that really has uh, the real strength that we need for this to be given at all levels, would you please say aye? Aye. And I know I'm not even going to ask for no on this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. This is very important. All right. As uh, you've heard, the uh, task force will be uh, appointed to uh, speak to these issues, and uh, we'll be hearing more in the near future. In these waning moments of the conference, we have about three minutes left before the lights go out. Uh, we want to express appreciations to a number of people. Yes, the chair sees a request for recognition here at microphone one, if you can uh, do so quickly. Patrick Styers from the Florida District. Just wondering if we ever brought back information on the memorials yesterday for immediate implementation. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, the, the chair just asked if there were any overlooked memorials. Uh, we do see a possibility of one such at microphone uh, nine. Buddy Rampey, South Carolina. Mr. Chair, I would move the immediate implementation of uh, Memorial 235. 235 related to? Terms for District Board of Administration members. All right. We've allowed for three-year terms. page 60. On 235, correct? All right. It, that was, Chair takes that as a motion for immediate implementation. Is there support? All right, Chair, here's support. If you're in favor of the immediate implementation of 235 related to terms uh, for District Board of Administration members, will you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried and so ordered. Microphone two. Don Hodgen, Central Canada. I would move uh, for the immediate implementation of Memorial 1010. Uh, the chair believes that's going to be rather difficult since uh, the new discipline won't be published with the ritual law in it. If you want to make it effective immediately, you can. Everybody will have to just take a copy of this memorial home as amended to make it work. We would be pleased to defer to the chair. All right. Thank you. All right. M microphone eight. Chair, move to uh, have 165 uh, immediately adopted. Relating to? Uh, the nomination of vice chair. All right. You have heard, is there a, uh, you've heard a motion. Is there support for the immediate implementation? You've heard a motion with support for immediate implementation of 165. Any discussion? If you're in favor of immediate implementation of 165, would you say aye? If you're opposed, say no. It is carried and so ordered. Yes, microphone one. Mr. Chair, I move the immediate implementation of Memorial 395 on refining the boundaries for Central Canada. All right. Is there support? You've heard a motion with support for immediate implementation of 395. Any discussion? Didn't think so. If you're in favor, say aye. If you're opposed, say no, and it is carried. All right, yes, microphone four. Mark Eckert, Indiana South. I would like to uh, make a recommendation that Dr. Jim Garlow be a, um, chair of a task force that the general board could uh, establish that maybe we could have a meeting and bring in delegates or bring in representation to discuss and deal with social issues that are uh, coming forth. Okay, the chair believes that that uh, appointment of the task force and naming of its chair would be under the purview of the general superintendent and the general board uh, when it follows through on the affirmation given earlier. Okay, right, thank, thank you. you. All right, we have uh, exhausted our time for uh, business but how grateful we are for each other. Aren't you glad to be part of the great family that God's creating from every tribe and nation and language? And uh, that we get to simply raise our voice in praise and worship to him and offer our lives and service to him as well. 
We have reached the conclusion of our business. There are a couple of announcements we would like to make. There's a final song before we go. We'd like to thank our worship leaders, wouldn't we? Todd Guy and the worship band who have assisted us throughout our conference. You're also aware that we have sound and light technicians and cameramen and uh, persons who've helped us throughout this conference. Thank you to each of the staff. We hope your hotel staff has been gracious. The convention people have been wonderful to work with, haven't they? Friends, as we conclude this conference, we'll do so in a spirit of worship. It's how we started, it's how we leave. We're here to honor Jesus Christ, Amen. to give him our lives. Our we are adjourned. Together. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Lift that up in adoration today. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, lifted in praise. Oh, name above all names, you are worthy. to him in praise then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of the heavenly hosts. Praise Lord Jesus, we thank you for covering your church with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being present in every piece and part of this conference. Thank you for the thousands of people that prayed at least 30 days prior to this conference and many that started praying a long time ago. I thank you for their faith, for their faithfulness, and for their prayers. And Lord, we look forward to the way you want to lead us and guide us in the future. We ask you to help us to have ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts that are open to the movement of your Holy Spirit in everything that we do and say. And may we have the courage and the boldness to act with your compassion and your grace and your love that the world may know that we are your disciples 
and that we are making new disciples with your love in this world today. In Jesus' name, we ask this prayer by this body, the prayer that you taught us all to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continue to fill, fulfill the Great Commission in the spirit of the Great Commandment. God bless you.